All right, in the last video we talked about igneous rocks and how they form and how we classify them based on their mineral composition into either mafic or felsic rocks and based on their texture, whether they're coarse-grained or fine-grained rocks. Um, so let's look at some of the landforms that are formed by these rocks and how um, igneous rocks actually form. So here's a nice diagram uh, showing an area that's got active volcanic activity, right? So we have uh, molten magma coming up through the crust and intruding, uh, creating what we call igneous intrusions. So let's start at the bottom. A sort of general term for any uh, piece of magma that intrudes into the crust and then cools into rock is called a pluton. So pluton, I think I mentioned in the last video, Pluto is the god of the underworld in, in Roman mythology. And so um, plutonic rocks are rocks that cool underground. So uh, anything that, that forms from molten magma underground is called a pluton. Now, if you have a really big feature, so you have a lot of magma that's over a really extensive area, uh, again, there's a, the definition here covering at least 100 square kilometers. So a really big pluton is called a batholith. Um, but plutons can be either um, what we call massive, so they're basically just sort of a big blob shape, or they can be tabular, and tabular means they're flat in one direction. Um, so we can see here, um, if, if a rock, if a pluton is tabular, it's called a sill. And a sill is uh, where you have magma intruding between sedimentary rock layers. So if you have like a weakness between those two rock layers, you get a sill, right? So there's our... Um, igneous rock in between. Um, you can also have what's called a dike. So a dike is tabular, it's flat in shape, um, but it goes, it cuts across rock layers, so it's typically vertical. So these vertical features here are called dikes, um, and that's where igneous rock has kind of found its way through a crack in the rock and squeezed up there and cooled. Um, so when any of those cool underground, they cool into gabbro or granite, usually granite, um, and then we call that a, a plutonic rock. Now sometimes um, this rock, uh, the, the magma will come all the way up to the surface and then it becomes a volcanic rock. And so there we get extrusive rock. So we have a lava flow here um, that might be made of basalt or something like that. Um, and that is an extrusive rock. Um, now we also get uh, another interesting feature we get is if we erode a volcano. So you see the volcano here is made up of layers, right? It's made up of layers of ash and lava flow and pyroclastic material. And that stuff wears away pretty fast. But the magma that, or the, the magma or the lava that cools in place is pretty tough stuff, right? Uh, igneous rock is crystalline, it's hard, uh, and it's, it's resistant to being weathered away. So you often get uh, what's called a volcanic neck or ra and with radiating dikes. So we can see sort of like the spokes of the wheel coming out there. So those are the different kinds of formations you get um, when you have volcanic activity. So here's an example of a sill. So after the volcanic activity is stopped and all the, all the rock has cooled, um, so this is a sill. And so we can see here, um, this is a, a canyon in Arizona. And we can see these are all sedimentary rock layers here. We can see the layers of sedimentary rock above, and we can see layers of sedimentary rock below. Um, but this area here, this is a big cliff of igneous rock. And so what we had here was an intrusion of magma in between these sedimentary rock layers and cooling into a sill. Um, here's an example of a dike. So what, we, what we're left with when we have a dike is usually a wall, right? Remember that igneous rock is more resistant to weathering, so it'll stay up there and the, and the um, sedimentary rock on either side will wear away. This is a photo from Colorado and we're going to be in this place on the trip this summer um, and see some of the best examples of this anywhere in the world. So this is an igneous dike. We can see this rock wall. Um, that's sticking up even taller than the trees. I think it's maybe 50 to 100 feet high um, and uh, like maybe 20 feet wide. Um, so that's an igneous dike. Now here's an example of a batholith. So again, we have a bunch of plutons, a big, you know, all these blobs coming up and coalescing here. Um, and it's forming a whole mountain range, so a very big feature called a batholith. The Sierra Nevada Mountains in, in California is one big batholith, and so it's all granite. Um, we're going to see the Pikes Peak batholith, which is a fairly large batholith that contains Pike Peak, Pikes Peak and some surrounding mountains, and we'll visit that on the trip as well. Okay, so now let's talk about um, different kinds of lava flows. So we talked about plutonic landforms, like sills and dikes and batholiths. 
let's talk about volcanic uh, lava flows here. So um, this is on Hawaii, and we have two main types of, of lava flows on Hawaii, and these are basaltic lava flows, right? So they're made up of mafic minerals. We can see how dark they are. Um, so this is dark, dense, heavy rock that's flowing out um, out of the earth, cooling extrusively. So we have this jagged type of rocks back here um, is called a, a lava, that's a Hawaiian word. And then the uh, smoother type of rock here is called pahoi hoi lava. Um, but both of these lava flows, uh, despite the fact that one's jagged and one's smooth, they're both very dark, dense rock, and it's mafic volcanic rock. Um, now, there's different types of volcanoes form from these different types of magma or lava. So with that mafic lava, um, like Aa -A and Pahoy Hoy, um, we get what's called a shield volcano. In fact, most of the island of Hawaii is made up of one big or a couple of big shield volcanoes that have come together. You can see this broad shape of Mount Kilauea here. Um, and that is classic shield volcano. In fact, Kilauea is the l largest mountain on Earth if you measure it from the bottom of the seafloor to the top. It's something like 30,000 feet high. It's a very, very large feature. And this is formed by what's called a mantle plume. Remember, the magma that's coming out there is really dark, heavy, dense rock. A lot of iron and magnesium in it. And that's because it's coming from very deep in the Earth. And this is a feature called a mantle plume, where you have this rock m melting very deep in the Earth and forming this this jet, this column, that comes up and punches through the lithosphere and then flows out on the surface. And so because it comes from very deep down, remember that's dense, heavy mantle rock that, that's coming out through. Um, if you've been following the news lately, um, Kilauea is very active right now, and there's a lot of lava flows. Um, those lava flows are doing a ton of damage to property, you know, just covering whole towns, uh, burning up people's houses and things like that. But it isn't uh, a huge threat to life and limb. This magma flows nice and easy, um, and you don't have to sort of run for your life from it. Uh, it's fairly slow moving. <clears throat> now here's a different type of volcano, and this forms from andesitic uh, or felsic magma or, or lava. Um, and this is called a composite cone volcano or a stratovolcano. So a lot of the classic sort of uh, tall volcanic peaks with this sort of concave sides. This is Mount Fujiyama in, in Japan, uh, but there are many of these around the world. Um, they're much smaller than a um, than a shield volcano, and they form they build up over um, by uh, ash flows and pyroclastic flows and lava flows coming and forming these very steep mountains. Now, these are the kind of mountains, so composite cones or stratovolcanoes, because they have felsic minerals in them. Uh, felsic minerals don't like to flow. Mafic minerals, like on Hawaii, they'll flow nice and easily there. They're low viscosity. Um, but felsic lavas don't like to flow, so they build up and build up and build up a lot of pressure until bam, you have this big uh, explosion. Um, and so you have a lot of gases and ash and things. And these, because they're so uh, powerful um, and so sudden, these are, you do have to run for your life from. This, this guy right here is running for his life um, because we have this pyroclastic flow coming downhill. And this is a bunch of really hot gases, superheated gases, ash, um, a little bits of, of lava and so on. Um, these can move downhill very, very rapidly, sometimes 100 miles an hour. Um, and that's, uh, you know, when you have felsic uh, material, that's where you get pyroclastic flow. We get a lot of our pyroclastic things like bombs and ash coming out of these sorts of composite cone volcanoes. Um, here's just an example of what a pyroclastic flow looks like uh, after an eruption. So this is from, uh, this is on the island of Sumbawa. Um, where Mount Tambora erupted in 1815. Um, I was there doing some research looking at these carbonized logs. Um, these, these have been basically uh, burned up by the pyroclastic flow. The superheated gas just charred the tree um, immediately. Uh, but you can still see tree rings in here, which tells us a lot about the past. Um, but you can see this material. This is all compacted um, pyroclastic material, ash and, and lava and things like that. Um, so those are our main sort of um, features and landforms that we get from plutonic and uh, volcanic activity. In the next video, we'll talk about sedimentary rocks.